Hey guys, have you gotten your vaccine shots yet? I know I'm a little late to the party, but this is a kind reminder to get your shots. Yes, not just the new COVID vaccine, which the booster is out, but also the flu vaccine. Let's not forget the flu shot. That being said, I find it interesting that the rate of trust for the flu vaccine has fallen ever since COVID. Like, do you guys remember when the flu vaccine was controversial before COVID? Because I certainly don't. And then all of a sudden, less people are taking the flu shot after the COVID vaccine had so much controversy and misinformation spread around. It's completely ridiculous in my opinion, and this new distrust comes from mainly Republicans. But that's not really a surprise, is it? Anyway, we were talking about the flu shot. That's right. I looked on your site, and um, one of the topics that uh, you talked about is flu shots and how... Um, it, it might not uh, be helping a certain group. Can you explain um, a little bit about that? Well, flu shots are a very big topic very, in terms yes. of you know the, the benefits and the, and the negatives. And unfortunately, I wish that flu shots were really enormously better than they are. So there's been a lot of questions that have come up. Mm -hmm. Number one, they're grown typically, and this may change, but right now, typically they're grown in eggs right. and they put in what they think will be the strains, and then they grow them. Right, yeah, so in case you all didn't know, the flu shot is indeed grown in eggs, specifically chicken eggs. We have to inject the virus into a specific area of the egg and incubate it for two days at body temperature. By the time of harvest, the virus is at an inactive state and we can then separate its antigens for vaccine purposes. That, of course, is a very simplified version of the process, but basically we use a few hundred millions of eggs every flu season since you really don't get that much out per egg. Yes, perhaps you could say it's a little wasteful, but a necessary process nonetheless. Now, just because the majority of influenza vaccines are produced this way doesn't mean they all are. Anyway, let's continue. But it turns out, and there were papers published on this about a year ago, mm -hmm. that the virus actually morphs in this process of growing it to become the flu shot. And in that process, it changes. So what they put into the egg is not what they get out of the egg. So mm -hmm. it's a best guess scenario in the first place. Using the word morphs is too strong. That makes it sound like it's changing into something completely different than intended. Here's the thing, the virus does indeed mutate while it's in the egg. Viruses in general mutate all the time, after all, and the mutations can be unpredictable and unpreventable. However, in the span of 48 hours, you're not going to see enough change so that it becomes a completely different virus. Sure, we'll have mutations. Sure, those mutations are going to affect its spike protein display, but it's not to the point where you're going to get zero effectiveness out of it. That being said, the flu shot can vary in its effectiveness for sure, especially since we have to make a new one every year and the virus also changes while it's out in the wild, but please do not over-exaggerate this mutation process. The flu shot is still effective and will continue to be, so you should get it. But what they put in isn't what they get out. So the chance of the flu shot being incredibly beneficial isn't zero, but it's on the low end. Okay, let me clarify something important. Viruses are going to mutate, and they are mutating all the time. As we speak, the influenza viruses are all mutating, and new strains are in the middle of being created. But you have to realize that vaccines in general aren't just a hit or miss scenario. It's not either it's effective or it's not effective. But rather, even if the target virus mutates, it can still protect you. The further the virus mutates, the less effective the vaccine is, yes, but it still covers a massive range in which it can fight against the virus. When viruses mutate, they can have changes to their antigens, which obviously causes the most problems for vaccine efficacy. But even if there is a change, the antibodies will still respond. Specifically, mutations change things little by little, and as long as the spike protein, for example, doesn't change to something completely different all at once, antibodies can still fit and match to a certain extent. We measure this using affinity. The more mutations, the less affinity. But there still is affinity, which is why if the virus or vaccine weakened virus mutates, it's still going to be effective, and this goes both ways for both the virus out in the wild and also the growth of the vaccine itself. Even a mismatch can offer plenty of protection. We know for seniors, the most, the most at-risk people, like the very young children and the seniors, seniors being you know, arbitrarily 65 and up, mm -hmm. that they have less robust immune systems. Young children, their immune systems are not yet mature, you know, like babies, and old people, they have aging immune systems. And with loss of hormones, their immune systems are not as robust. You could have an adult, an elderly adult, who gets a, a ruptured appendix and they don't even muster a fever. Their white count doesn't even go up. I mean, that's because their immune systems are so weak. So those, the most vulnerable people to die from the flu are the ones that get the least benefit from the flu shot, and, and the benefit for everyone is kind of in question. Actually, it's the complete opposite. The ones who have the weakest immune systems are the ones who need the flu shot the most. 
Let me put it this way for you. The vaccine boosts immune function specifically against influenza. Someone who has a strong immune system will get the most response out of a vaccine, yes, but they are also the most likely to not get sick or die from getting the actual flu itself when they are not vaccinated. Meanwhile, let's take the most vulnerable groups, old people, young babies, and pregnant women, for example. They are in the high-risk group specifically because their own natural immunity is less effective and thus making the vaccine an even more important choice for them because they are more vulnerable if they get the actual disease itself. So then, how do we deal with them not getting as strong of an immune response? Easy, we can increase the effectiveness of the vaccine by adding adjuvants or increasing the dosage. So in conclusion, you flipped your thinking entirely backwards there. So the CDC's own data is that the traditional flu shot, we'll call it the single dose, that for seniors has an efficacy of 24%. I don't know what data you're citing exactly, but that number is quite low. First of all, regarding the efficacy, that number varies year by year because there's a bit of predictive work and we deal with a different flu each year, so it's impossible to get an exact number. That being said, studies over the last few decades have shown an approximately 60% efficacy, with it being slightly lower for elderly at around 50%. The numbers aren't exactly stable and have room for interpretation depending on age and its implications on symptomatic disease, age, death, etc., so do take these numbers with a grain of salt. But studies in general have shown quite a significant efficacy efficacy and effectiveness, including the elderly. I know 50 or 60% might not sound like that much, but that's also because y'all got too spoiled with the COVID vaccines being at such high efficacy rates, and that was all over the news. But spoiler alert, vaccines aren't usually as high as 95%, so please don't think that's the norm. Well, you know, I scratched my head when I read that because, I, well, wait a minute, placebo is about 33%. So exactly, and how did you come up with that 24%? Um, you do know what efficacy is, right? There's a difference between efficacy and effectiveness. Efficacy is done in a controlled environment, usually studied by a clinical trial before its release. Say, for example, Pfizer's COVID shot. We found to have a 95% efficacy rate during its experiment phases, but those were controlled. Meanwhile, effectiveness is after the vaccine is released to the public, and we compare people who have gotten the shot versus people who haven't. Now, the neat part about efficacy is that it is usually measured against a control, which is a placebo in this case. In other words, even if what you said is true, that there is a 24% efficacy, that's against a placebo, which means the placebo itself shouldn't have an efficacy rate, unless that was measured against another control, which is just not taking the shot at all, but I can't imagine why anyone would do that to obtain the efficacy rate of the placebo every year. So yeah, the efficacy is measured against the placebo, so any efficacy at all means that that's how much is better than the placebo. I still doubt your 24 4% efficacy rate claim, by the way, since I literally just found papers that says otherwise. You also mentioned, quote, traditional flu shot, which I'm not too sure what that means. But anyway, our flu shots today are trivalent or quadrivalent, containing multiple strains, so your entire claim might not have been relevant to begin with, depending on what you meant. But then they came up with the senior flu shot, the strong flu shot. Okay, what is that? They just doubled the dose. So it's just taking the same flu shot and they just doubled the dose. Well, it's not just increasing the dosage, it's also adding in adjuvants that help stimulate a stronger immune response to the vaccine. Anyway, you act like increasing the dosage is a stupid idea, but no, it's a real practice that can give vulnerable people higher levels of protection. What's so absurd about that? So that brought the efficacy, this is the CDC's own data, from a measly 24% up to 26.5%. I honestly have no idea where you are pulling those numbers from. When looking through the CDC's research, it's clear that the vaccine is quite effective for both normal people and also the elderly. They do make the claim themselves that it's difficult to measure the efficacy or effectiveness of elderly individuals due to their widely varying immunity, so they don't give us an exact number. But that makes me doubt your percentage claims even more. I'll put some links in the description along with other sources for other things I've claimed in this video that indicates a much higher immune response for higher dosages and its recommendation to elderly people, so go check those out. So, and then their recommendation is, but every senior must get it. So, okay, so, but don't expect it to help you because there's far more chance that it won't help than that it will. And I'm not totally sure I know where they got that data from. But more importantly, I don't know where you got that data from, because it seems to me that you just pulled that out of thin air and just made up some numbers. Yes, the CDC recommends older people to get the shot. They even have a whole list of reasons on why, and studies have estimated the number of elderly lives saved from just getting the flu shot. So yes, if you're an elderly person, I do recommend getting the shot. So what can a person do? Well, it turns out that one of the staples of many of my treatments is N-acetylcysteine, and that's you know, a derivative from an amino acid, cysteine, and it actually is data that's published in very good peer-reviewed journals that it lowers your risk, not just of the flu, but of any kind of contagious thing. 
that comes along. No, 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 N-acetylcysteine is not a one-size-fits-all miracle drug. So please, please, please don't think it's qualified as a supplement that just anyone can take. It's a drug used to treat various conditions such as acetaminophen overdose, cystic fibrosis, and other things. It may have some sort of treatment effects against certain viruses including influenza A, but it's not something you should just pick off the shelves and regularly use. Plus, we have treatments against influenza already, but that doesn't compare at all to a vaccine which works to prevent rather than treat. That in and of itself is a massive difference. Alright, well that's all I wanted to say in this video. In conclusion, the flu shot is a good thing to get, and it's easier than ever now that you can just get it with the COVID booster. Thank you to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, and Rick Klen for the consistent support on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.